Is there something wrong with this side of the room here? <laughs> there is. Yeah. It's out of balance here. So we'll call to order the meeting of the joint Katati, of the joint meeting of the Katati City Council and the successor agency to the former Katati Community Redevelopment Agency for Tuesday, November 22nd, 2016. And if we could have a uh, roll call. Do you want to report out on the closed session? Uh, yes. Um, we had a closed session on real property and uh, we have just given staff direction on that. And that's all we have to report out on that. Council Member Skillman? Here. Council Member Dillica? Here. Mayor Moore? Here. Count Vice Mayor Harvey? Here. Council Member Landon? Here. And if you'd all kindly join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Speak on this item? You certainly may speak on this item. I'd like to item. speak on it right now, sir. No, you while may it's appropriate, speak on while it. we have people in the audience tonight, I, I have the right to, to speak on this item during during the item itself or before. You have the option to speak on this item on non action at the end of the uh, meeting tonight. That's a violation right. of the Brown Act, sir. I disagree with you. I've given you that opportunity ample times at all the various meetings and said you have the opportunity to speak on the Pledge of Allegiance now if you would like to and you have refused to. So. That's not true, sir. Okay. Well, I did last meeting. No, sir, you did not. Thank you. Do we have an approval of the minutes? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. And I will move on to announcements. The City of Katati has special open office hours on Monday evenings from 5 to 7 p.m. by appointment in the Community Development Department at City Hall as part of its Katati Open for Business program. The program provides personalized assistance and information to developers, current Katati business owners, and those interested in starting a new business within the city. The Rona Park Katati Regional Library hosts events for all ages, including art exhibits, book clubs, and children's programs. All events are free and open to the public. For more information, call the library at 584-9121 or visit sonomalibrary.org. The Katahdi Historical Society Museum is open regularly the second Tuesday of each month from 5 to 7 p.m., Saturdays from 1 to 4, and by appointment. For more information, call 794-0305. Citizens interested in re receiving City of Katahdi community alerts via text or email are encouraged to sign up at nixel.com. And the city offers a variety of recreational programs for all ages. See details on the web at katadicity.org. Uh, approval of the final agenda? No changes. Thank you. And now we will open it up for um, citizen business. Ms. Barrett. Good evening, Council. Good evening to the folks here in the room tonight. Good evening to all our, our people uh, watching the meeting from home via live streaming. My name is George Barrich. I'm a former Katahdi City Councilman here. I served with honor and distinction and led the city back in 2009 towards some real leadership and change in the right direction. And um, it's been a wonderful experience. And I'd like to also bring attention to the fact that we have a dismal public turnout here tonight. Once again, we have some members of the city staff uh, but for the most part, I remember very, very uh, uh, well-attended meetings by the public uh, in years past when the city was actually moving in the right direction. And um, it's very sad to see such a dismal turnout here, given the fact that the city council has called for more public participation in our body politic, yet can't seem to get anybody uh, to attend these meetings and get involved. I understand that uh, we haven't had an honorary mayor come before us in many, many months, so I would take it to understand that the honorary mayor program is no more. I've asked for some clarification from the council and city staff whether the, uh, the honorary mayor program has been discontinued, as I've recommended, but I haven't been able to get any, any thoughts on that. Also, um, it's that time of the year again. We're approaching 
Thanksgiving and Christmas, and for many years the council has said, boy, you know, we're really concerned about the homeless people who may be out in this freezing cold that's coming up this winter, and we want to do something about it. So for years now, uh, let's, let's not uh, uh, be confused that we are not doing anything for the homeless people who are out in the cold without automobiles, sleeping under the trees and under the freeway overpasses and in the parks and so forth. Uh, again, we have no services for them. The city hasn't spent one dime to try to alleviate the problem that we have homeless in this town that need some assistance, possibly a free ride to the nearest homeless shelter, a warm place to come in out of the cold and so forth. But again, we have no services. And it is shameful that the city council once again has said no to any services for the homeless who are going to be out in this cold weather. As you're going to be home safe and sound in your homes, having nice Thanksgiving meals with your family and friends and be down at the bars, kicking back a few at the white trash parties and so forth down there at Friar Tucks and so forth, I want you to remember the homeless in Katati who are going to be out there in the freezing cold. and. Um, are going to be asking what is it that the city can do for them after all the lip service about how concerned you are for all those people out there in the, out there in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to address citizens' business? Seeing none, I will close it. Council Member Jolson. Just wanted to add with the, um, <clears throat> the onset of our uh, safe parking program, which as we've already said is not a panacea for homelessness, it certainly isn't, but it's for those people who have just become homeless, still have an automobile, still probably have a job, may have a child. Um, and we looked at, I believe there were six locations throughout Sonoma County that offered this service. And the largest one was at um, the Sonoma County Planning Department, which has, I think it was up to 50 vehicles that would park there overnight. And all of the other ones in the county were two to three vehicles. And ours, our final number was 10. So we're actually the second largest, being the smallest city in the county, second largest safe parking program in the county. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the council? Uh, I would just like to make a comment that one of the reasons I think we have a dismal public turnout is because of the um, angst and the anger and the bullying that occurs at city council meetings by some of the public. There's really discouraged input from the public to come down because they see and they hear and they're done with it. And they're like, I'm not going to participate in that with that kind of environment. So that's where I think is part of that issue there. You wish. So, okay. Any direction on future agenda items? Thank you. And then we have our consent calendar. Any okay. comments on the consent calendar? I'm not seeing anybody jump forward to pull anything, so at, at risk, I, oh, wait a minute. Oh. Should I drag my feet? Yeah. I was going to move, move approval. Um, I'd like to pull item B. Okay. Anything else? Then I'd like to move approval, save item B. Second. Ooh, do you get it out for Boy, that was a photo. <laughs> that second. was a photo finish. Just to be louder, I'll say second again. Um, Right, you may have that second. So we have a motion and a second to approve the consent calendar item sans item B. Yes, sir. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Now we'll move on to item B on the consent calendar. Uh, thank you. Good evening, Mayor. Now, you were prepared for this just in case it was cold. <laughs> yes. Actually, real, Damian real quick. Gave me the um, sorry, just real quick. Uh, did, did Council want to report on this, or are there specific questions? What's, what's the desire? Well, since the public is here, it's probably worthwhile having a, a report so they know what we're talking about. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> this item before you is... Um, 
a request for a one-year extension of an existing vesting tentative map for a project that was originally approved in 2009 at 100 Valparaiso. Um, <clears throat> the project was uh, approved in 2009 and then um, there were several outstanding issues associated with environmental mitigations on the property, mostly having to do with historic structures. Um, and then the market downturn also impacted uh, the project applicant's desire to build the project as it was approved. So they are currently in for an amendment. They were, were processing an amendment to the vesting tentative map, um, but uh, that project hasn't made it to the decision makers prior to the pending expiration of the existing map. So. Um, there may be a little bit of confusion for the public in that this is an extension of the existing 2009 map. We are shortly taking through the process um, an amended project on that same property. So the two are obviously related, but they're separate actions. The extension tonight doesn't, um, doesn't foreshorten any of those subsequent public hearings associated with the amended um, map that will be coming through the process. Um, there were, um, in our work associated with the amended application, um, we had requested s updates to um, several of the um, resource studies that were done on the property, one having to do with the condition of the remaining stone structure and another having to do with um, uh, the biology on the site. And so the updated biology report found um, two existing wetlands. They're not, um, you know, ponds with aquatic birds and things in them, but they're uh, continually wet soil, areas of wet soil. So um, the biologist, the applicant's biologist feels that the Army Corps of Engineers will take jurisdiction over those. Um, they haven't gotten that determination yet, so we are proposing um, as a, because it exists regardless of which project would go through, um, we are proposing to add a condition of approval that um, ensures that the project avoid those two wetland areas. So that is one um, recommended condition of approval for you tonight. And um, I think those are the highlights, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. So um, one of my biggest questions surrounds around the uh, stone structure. Um, and we said in 2009 that within 30 days of approval that that stone structure was supposed to be roofed. Um, it is now almost 10 years later. It's well past 30 days. We gave them an extension on this last year and it's still not roofed. Um, what, if anything, can we do about that? And secondarily, when I looked at the information um, on the report about the building, um, it talks about the exterior of the building and not the interior. And I would be less concerned, you know, most buildings are meant to withstand the weather externally, but they're never meant to be open open air buildings, um, and I saw no mention of that in any of that. So those are my biggest questions. Uh, my last question is there's a couple things in here. In one section it talks about um, not exceeding a total of five years, which obviously we're past that, and in another section it says that the tentative map can't um, withstand more than 10 years, and, uh, and I think we're a I, we're well past the five years, and I think we're bumping into the 10 years. So if you could speak to those items, that would be helpful. Sure, thank you. Let me um, take the timing first. Um, the information that was in the packet um, that had the time frames associated with it, were actually, that information was actually contained in the applicant's um, request for the extension, and the, um, accompanying information that he provided was actually 
um, slightly outdated. There was an amendment to the government code just this last fall. So the time frame instead of five years is actually six now. Um, but the difference between the um, five slash six and the 10 year horizons are the 10 year horizon is applicable um, with an expenditure of funds for offsite improvements. So if a developer had a complicated map that was phased over several development um, neighborhoods, I'll call them, and they had significant offsite improvements, um, they're allowed 10 years so long as they're making progress toward, toward the offsite improvements, and that's measured by expenditure of funds. Um, the five years is applicable on a more straightforward project like this one would be, and, and it's really, as I said, six years. Um, the six years is in addition to the initial two-year life, so in even the most straightforward condition, you would actually have a map that had an eight-year potential life. So they're given two years at the state level, and then there are additional six years worth of um, discretionary one-year extensions that the local authorities can grant. So it's a total possible of eight years. What complicates that a little bit more um, in this time frame has been the recession. The state legislature granted several automatic extensions um, to cover maps that would have been expiring during the recession. So this map qualified for two of those, so they got an additional four years um, worth of life. So as it stands today, um, this map could have a 12-year life. And um, uh, Councilmember Harvey had let me know about her concerns and had a little time to research those. And I um, think I have a couple of good, well, I have some information that, that may help you. And then I have a suggestion for an additional condition of approval for tonight. Um, so I did ensure with the um, architectural historian that she had gone inside the structure and she had, she did look inside. She didn't mention it in her report, but she did. Um, this, she said the structure is potentially a little more protected on the inside just because of the debris from the fallen roof. It, it um, covers or shields some of the um, interior stonework, but by and large, um, inside, outside, they get the same amount of weathering at this point um, because it's uncovered. Um, so in consultation with um, the city attorney, we developed a second condition of approval to address the issue of them not, they, they are currently in violation of that standard, or excuse me, of that condition of approval. They absolutely are in violation of it. Um, uh, this additional condition that I'm gonna recommend in a minute and read to you, um, would ensure that we wouldn't grant any further extensions um, if the building was not re-roofed. So if the council were to grant the extension, the one-year extension tonight, that would give them sufficient time to um, get the decision maker's decision on the amended map um, and decide whether they're going forward with their project or whether they like the existing project better or whether they don't want to build anything. Um, but it would preclude the unroofed condition from proceeding any further, so long as there's a map. So the wording of that proposed condition would be, um, uh, and let me just say right now, the, the um, current condition that's on the project of re-roofing within 30 days, um, the subsequent work that we've done with the architectural historian tells me that really that should be about 60 days because we've discovered that we need probably to do it right. We need some additional structural work. And so I'm gonna recommend 60 instead of 30 and that's why. Um, but the condition would read, um, stone building shall be re-roofed in accordance with consulting architectural historians recommendations within 60 days of the date of the extension resolution adoption. That would be tonight. <coughs> If this work is not completed within the required time frame, no further extensions of the vesting tentative map shall be granted. 
and that would be added as um, condition number two to exhibit A to tonight's resolution. Thank you for that and thank you for checking on that um, and thank you for that wording. That does help. Any other questions? <laughs> it's just me. Uh, no, um, I had also spoken to Vicki a little bit about some of those same issues. Um, the when we talk about the bio concerns on that, um, those are going to be addressed down the road when the final plans come into play. Yes, with this additional condition, regardless of which project were to come through for permitting, um, they would both be conditioned to avoid the wetlands. Um, so the designs that go through for permitting would have to reflect an avoidance of, of the wetlands, which we, we know where they are. They've been mapped. If I might, uh, I want to thank you for pulling that. I actually have some notes as well. Uh, I, and I'll speak later after public comment. But what I do want to ask is this. I'm struck what are the consequences of being in violation? Now, obviously, we have an answer to that issue um, that resolves that. But absent of that, I I'm curious, just for my edification and, and everybody else, what options does a city have when you have an agreement like that and it's not upheld for such an incredibly long period of time? We're past seven years, I believe. That is getting close to a decade. Um, and I'll let the city attorney pop in. She probably has a a more educated answer than I do, um, but uh, my understanding of it has been that we would have to initiate um, legal action in order to enforce the condition of approval. Okay. I think that I might have some comments, but I think I should save it until after public comment, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, at this point, I'll open up the public comment. Mr. Barrett. It's pretty shocking that this item would be on the consent calendar in the first place. Uh, so thank you for pulling it nonetheless. Uh, the mayor has said that he spoke with Vicki uh, about a couple items here, which is a good thing, but I don't know about how transparent that is because I understand one of the reasons the mayor says he doesn't like to talk to staff beforehand on some of these issues is that in the, ish, in the uh, spirit of transparency. So it, it gets a little confusing here, the double talk. I would like to commend uh, Mrs. Harvey for the questions she asked, but I want to remind the council once again, <clears throat> I think it's appropriate to ask any questions of the city staff that you feel is appropriate before the meetings, either in writing or in person, so that the staff can do their due diligence in preparing the answers as best they can for your consideration. We don't want to blindside the city staff. This is all in your council member's handbook. You don't want to try to act like you're smarter than staff. You don't want to trip them up. Uh, they, they, they deserve the right uh, to be able to answer your questions uh, specifically and have those answers ready for you uh, during these meetings. It will streamline the process. It will make it easier for you. And then if questions come up, given these answers, then you're full within your right and responsibility to ask those questions. But um, it's getting a little bit tiresome to see you pull this on staff. They don't deserve it, although they get paid well. We are taught as city council members to ask the questions to city staff beforehand because it is, is the appropriate thing to do. Thank you. <clears throat> Would anyone else like to address this item on the public comment? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close and bring it back to the council. Councilmember Lander. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, um, I think when dealing with just everybody, it's a good idea not to surprise folks to be clear and honest in your communications. And certainly with working with the developer community, I think that's the type of relationship you, you want to have. In this particular instance, um, looking at this house, I had some concerns because although I appreciate staff doing the work of having the historian go and check on it, what we're doing is looking for damage. And what I see is one of these days they're going to report back, oh, yeah, now it is damaged. Uh, and that, uh, to my mind, wasn't really probably the, us truly doing our job with this. Uh, now, I won't get into the argument to the value of what's inside that house or not. I know there's a lot of 
historical interest, the sentimental interest, and I also have had a chance to tour the inside. But I think that's all, frankly, beside the point. The point is there was an agreement seven years ago to take care of this. So I think the message I'd like to publicly say is that this is the sort of thing, this unwillingness to comply with this one simple requirement that it wasn't just us. This was the whole community, given the circumstances, which I won't bring back up again, but there was some strong concern after two buildings were damaged in that property that were supposed to be saved. I think this isn't really helpful for us working together in the future, and I think it could have a bearing on our ability to come to a good conclusion eventually in this property. So I think I want to send the strongest message as possible to make sure to step up to do that part of that for this town, if you want to be part of this town in working in this community. So thanks for the opportunity to say that, too. I was more than willing to support this extension tonight, and I will, but I would be completely supportive of not extending another if this new team can't get this accomplished within this short amount of time. I think it's time for it. When you talk about the new team, are you referring to the existing development group? I'm talking to about the existing development group, but the people that they have essentially running point on these things. I sense there's a lot more effort to try and be responsive to the needs of the community. I'm appreciative of that, and I'd like to see that continue. So this is a, a strong vote of support to do something about that and, and keep going in that direction. Any other comments from here? Um, what happens if we don't authorize this agreement, extend this agreement? Uh, the existing vesting tentative map um, expires, and there's uh, obviously I can't speak on their behalf. I think there's probably considerable value lost, and then they they uh, would continue processing the amended tentative map, the amended, well, which would become a new tentative map. So the, uh, there are several items associated with, I mean, several issues associated with the value um, to a financing group that having existing entitlements brings over vacant property. Um, there's also um, an existing environmental document um, that we update in this case because it's existing adopted that would go away and um, we'd start from ground zero with a new environmental document. Um, my, my concern on this is, is I concur with Councilmember Landman and, and Vice Mayor Harvey, um, ample opportunity to do that what was requested on the conditional extension of the map and nothing. No, we're having a hard time. We're not going to be able to get to it. We've got some other irons and some other problems. I mean, I don't even know if they gave us the courtesy of a call, you know. Um, and to me, it's, it's a flagrant disregard. Um, but my concern is if we did not extend this, it would hinder our ability to protect that historic building from further damage um, down the road. I mean, as Councilmember Landman alluded to, you know, we've already lost some property there due to um, mysterious circumstances. Um, so, although I would not necessarily rather have them start all over from ground zero, I am a little concerned that um, they just kind of blew us off. That's what it feels like. But, well, with the, with the condition that we let them, or, or encourage them to put that roof on there and protect what's remaining of there within 60 days. Um, that would be about the only way I would um, want to extend that. So uh, I concur with uh, what both of you have said. It, it's really a, a balancing act because you do want to work with developers and you do want to make sure that we have the proper projects here. We want to ensure that our neighborhoods are the way they should be. Yes, there's been some unfortunate happenings, if you will, that have happened uh, in the past on this property. Um, but I feel like we've gone far and above in uh, helping with this. And um, I, I agree that, that it feels like, um, you know, 
they're just not wanting to meet us part way at all you know that really just blatantly saying you know well that's a condition but i don't have to meet it you know it's just a written thing so i i agree with you so so i'm i get really torn here because they have done work i am hopeful that eventually at some point in the future um something may happen there um and when i was out walking and talking to people you know people get anxious with that you know start stop start stop start stop of this so you know people would like either the property to just stay there and and um you know let it be what it is or something get get built there um i do really appreciate um you and robin working together to um come up with um some other language that does help um make it feel a little bit better but i i agree I, i would like a strong message sent to them that that this is kind of you you've ignored us long enough this is sort of it um uh, i just i don't know how how else um to say it and um uh it reminds me that um Mr. Barrett mentioned um us talking uh, to staff beforehand and and that is why um staff was prepared is is I did reach out because I I I did want to make sure that they had the opportunity um to get the questions and I do try and do that where possible um sometimes things come up um but um I do try and do that so um with that wording um I guess Oh, he wants to talk. Okay. All right. I was going to make a motion. No, that's great. All right. Yeah, apparently he does want to talk. Um in in the revision of that second um finding that you were talking about, uh is that making an assumption because I think, you know, in writing any kind of a contract, we need to be so clear and so obvious on what we are requesting in this case. Um would it be wise uh, as a as a way to continue to preserve the structure that is there um to talk about clearing of vegetation and even say like a 10 foot perimeter around the building is it is that something that can also be worked into that cuz within 60 days first of all clearing the vegetation cuz it's predominantly blackberries would be a really wise thing to do if you're going to be working on it and putting a roof on a building so i'm just wondering if we wanted to get just that specific and put that kind of information in there if it's not too late to do something like that um it's not at all too late to do that and we could certainly add that to it as well um okay and and i will add if if uh this is just my own um these are my own conclusions i've come to that i i think there was a lack of interest in ensuring um the condition was met um because the applicant um I believe and I don't want to speak out of turn but I believe would have preferred to not have the stone structure carried forward with the current design that went to design review recently and the realization that the CEQA requires them to retain it to try and retain it first and foremost I think the there is more interest at this point in in re-roofing it and ensuring that it's it, it most stable for that future neighborhood that surrounds it. So I think we're in a better position now than we were a few years ago to ensure that it's re-roofed timely. Thank you. Could you kindly reword how you were going to phrase that on that condition? Reread it. Please. Okay. Um the stone building shall be re-roofed in accordance with the consulting architectural historian's recommendations within 60 days of the date of the extension resolution adoption if this work is not completed within the required time frame no further extensions of the vesting tentative map shall be granted and we would add to that um in addition to the historian's recommendations that all vegetation or uh we'll have to figure out how to make sure they don't clear all vegetation but the encumbering vegetation within 10 feet of the um foundation and is there a um an ability or provision to say within that if these conditions aren't met then the extension of the tentative map is void because if the map is extended for another year 
and they still don't do it within 60 days, well, then they say that extension, that they're not going to get another one. But it doesn't mean... I, I or don't, could you clarify that for me? Yeah, I, I defer to the city attorney on that one, but I don't think we can, I don't think we can terminate the map like that. Um, I think it has a life that stands. That's my conclusion. I, I could do some research, and I would need to do some research to give you a definitive answer on that because it's not a question that I typically encounter. But my my belief is that it would not void the current um, extension. It would just be at the end of the period they're done. Mr. Mayor, for, for what it's worth, this is a vesting tentative map, mm -hmm. which means it's very early in the process, which means they'll be coming back our way several times. So I think if there is an interest to actually move forward this year with uh, their uh, map extension, they'll probably be willing to do that work. I think there'd be some motivation. Uh, and I wanted to ask also, I, I really like the idea that Council Member Dill also put on, that, that would be a good idea. If we're going to get this thing fixed and it's going to be there for the community to see, it would be a good idea to remove the vegetation, the noxious vegetation with the blackberries that are on it. Could we add the, re the requirement that that uh, vegetation removal is maintained semi-annually or something like that for the, for the, dura for the duration of the map? Because I think we all know from our own neighborhoods how quickly those blackberries come back. It doesn't take much. That'll just make them. And come if we're going to give this, uh, the view of this thing back to our uh, community, we should try and keep it. Yeah. With those, I think you were going to make a motion. I, I'd be happy to support a motion that had all, all those additions. Okay. I move that the City Council adopt a resolution approving an extension of the 100 Valparaiso vesting tentative map. Use permit and design review PA33-06 for a period of 12 months to expire on October 28, 2017 with the additional um, condition um, that staff read to us. And I'll second that also adding the conditions we added regarding vegetation removal and maintenance of that status. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Parker. Thank you. I think we sent a pretty affirmative message to them. Now we'll move on to public hearings. Um, adoption of an ordinance adopting the 2016 California Code of Regulations, Title 24. Uh, good evening, Mayor Moore and Council Members. Uh, we're here tonight for uh, adoption of the uh, um, Rancho Adobe Fire District. Oh, excuse me, building, building code. <laughs> Lost my place there. Um, we brought this, uh, we introduced this on November 9th uh, to the Council, and we have had the hearing uh, notice per state regulations. Um, and we've had uh, uh, no public uh, input as far as, uh, you know, anything, that, any kind of uh, notices that they were looking for. And uh, tonight we're here for the adoption of the codes and also for any questions you may have uh, pending also. Thank you. Any questions from the council? I don't have any questions, so um, at this point I can open up for public comment if anybody has any. Ms. Alderman. <coughs> First, I'd like to give my written one that was put in the back, in the back of where you always put public comment. You put it in the back, in the folder where nobody can see it. It's not Lauren's. Um, it's not Lauren's fault. It's tradition. Uh, please, and she's going to give you each a copy. Um, you are all forgetting that for over a year, you did not, um, with the building codes, you did not at all do one building code at my next door neighbors after multiple explosions. 
We were exposed to dust, the toxic dust. My mother was sick for two months. And you did nothing other than harass me. I think it's a joke, Mr. Moore, that you, you're the biggest bully around and you're blaming George. You, there was so much broken laws over this and cover up, you all know it. You've seen my emails for six months. You did not do anything. You don't, I, I would tell you the building codes and you ignored them. I'd, I'd ask for enforcement, you ignored them. Our family was horribly treated. We were sick and you did nothing. I have pictures, even my cat, actually two cats have, because of the fire, you denied there was toxic dust there and toxic chemicals from the explosion. Vicki over here for over a year would not put in tests, independent lab test results that showed the high chemicals and the high, even into the abatement field, proceedings and when I tried you sat there and um, sorry I'm very upset you sat there and called me psycho and told me to get into reality this was December 8 2014 I know exactly when it was because then Miss Gilman when I tried to tell the story tried to go and have me removed for talking over the time limit by one minute and then, which was totally illegal, totally against my civil rights. You guys need to get really your act together. I mean, I was so outraged what was going on here tonight. You, especially, there's been all this damn slander and libel, and you guys all profited for it for the last two, two, three weeks, and you done nothing. And you sit there up there and pretend this, that's your, that's reality. This is reality. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the adoption of an ordinance adopting the 2016 California Code of Regulations, Title 24? Seeing none, I will close public comment on that and bring it back to the council. Mr. Mayor, if I might. Just a quick comment. Uh, I really like the general trend towards working throughout the county, coming up with some progressive standards and making sure they're county-wide standards so it benefits everybody that has to come in for plans, permits, uh, to know the regulations they're saying for all our businesses. I appreciate that work, and I'm sure. Knowing how hard it is to do anything just at a city level, let alone at a county level, there was probably a little work going to make that happen. But thank you all for that. This, this is a good result. Councilman No, no comment. No. No comment. Ready for a motion? I'm ready for a motion. You can do it. I'll oh. move to adopt an ordinance amending Chapter 14.04 of the Katadi Municipal Code to adopt by reference the 2016 edition of the California Code of Regulations, Title 24, the 2015 edition of the International Property Maintenance Code, and the 2015 International Pool and Spa Code with local amendments. And I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I'm gonna move on to the regular agenda. Thank you, Mayor, members of the Council. Um, this item is discussion of the moment of silence on the City Council agenda. And um, it's all in the staff report, but I'll just summarize briefly. The, um, the City Council previously had a moment of silence following the Pledge of Allegiance in 2009. The City Council at, at that time decided to remove it from the City Council agenda and the, um, the minutes from that meeting are included in the staff report. In 2014, the City Council adopted a policy, Policy 2014-01, which allowed for the Mayor to call for a moment of silence to honor a person or recognize a noteworthy event. Um, it further provides, and this um, policy is, a, is attached to the staff report, <clears throat> that Council members may request through the Mayor that a moment of silence observe, is observed for the same reasons. And the minutes for that um, uh, 2014 meeting is also included in the staff report, and I apologize, there's a small typo in there, it says 2016. It's 2000, October 14, 2014. And um, 
there is no requirement for a moment of silence, but some governing boards observe a moment of silence as a routine part of every meeting. Um, and if the council were to reinstate the moment of silence, um, the assumption is it would follow the Pledge of Allegiance as had been done previous to 2009. And um, it'll also require a minor amendment to the city council rules, which is policy 2016-01 regarding the order of business. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. No questions from staff? You already answered my one question with the typo, so thank you. Um, I asked to put this on the um, agenda, and, and the reason I did is because in light of all the things that we had occurring last year, with various um, tragedies occurring and um, things that, that just, I think, needed time for us to take a moment to recognize and to, to um, digest a little bit. Um, I thought it might be appropriate at this time to bring this up and to, to keep in mind if it's not for a particular um, recognition or memoriam of a particular um, passing or tragic event, that it might give us an opportunity before we go into a meeting to maybe be reflective and to take a moment and to just uh, think about what we're going into the meeting, what's coming up on that agenda and how we might proceed with that in a um, civil and um, calm, uh, contemplative mode. Um, I don't know if there was any um, preconceived notions on how people might perceive that, but uh, to me, I thought it's, it does not hurt to take a breath before you delve into any endeavors and to um, give us a moment to maybe clear our thoughts and, um, and then if appropriate, um, recognize uh, somebody that may have uh, been um, victim of a tragedy or, um, or in memoriam to somebody. So with that, I'd entertain any questions. Mayor Moore? Absolutely. If I might, um, I don't disagree with what you're saying. And um, I, I totally understand that, you know, uh, just taking a pause at the beginning of uh, any meeting, honestly, it's just good to gather your thoughts, take a deep breath. Um, however, I also feel when we looked at this a couple of years ago, giving the mayor discretion to make that call, I'm perfectly fine with that. And also for the rest of the council to suggest to the city mayor, you know, I'm wondering if you would consider this for this evening. So I, I still think that what we adopted two years ago is very valid. Um, and, and I know 25 years ago, the first time I was on the council, that a moment of silence was just a regular thing. Some people felt it was, is it of a religious nature? I had never saw it that way. I, I don't believe it ever was, uh, the four years I was on the council then. So, um, so I'm kind of on the fence with this, but I also feel that our current policy from two years ago is, to me, still acceptable and applicable. So again, the discretion is there for whoever's the city mayor. Mr. Mayor, lots of comments. I'm sure we'd love to get into it. I wonder if we could have public comment first, because that way we can actually start having some back and forth on this. Absolutely. So with that in mind, I will open up for public comment. If anyone wants to address us, Mr. Parrish. Well, that was quite a performance there, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, quite a performance, uh, considering the fact that uh, it's been widely known to a lot of people in town that you're probably one of the most vile, dishonest, backstabbing politicians Katati has ever seen. So to sit up here tonight and claim that you want some kind of civility after everything that you've done in this town to organize and, and, and uh, berate people and uh, crush the opposition and and lie going door to door. I, you know, I, I, let, me, let me give you a little, little hand here, Mayor. That was really, really something. Now let's talk about the issue of a moment of silence. Back in 2009, it was Council Member Robert Coleman who brought this subject up, and we discussed it at length. Now, had you, if you had the podcast of that meeting, you'd be able to review it and listen to the man make a compelling argument 
why the moment of silence as a mandatory uh, gesture at every meeting should be removed. Um, but the fact is, because of your Katati's public records uh, policy, even though all the podcasts over the last 15 years could fit on a 32 gig thumb drive, most of them have been destroyed because you don't have the money to, on storage to save the, the, the podcasts. But be that as it, as it is, you're, able, you're only able to use the written minutes of the, minute, of the meeting to help you come to some kind of conclusion tonight on how you want to proceed on this matter. Mr. Deloso has it right. The current policy seems to be apropos that each and every one of you can take it upon yourself to ask for a moment of silence. If that was my understanding, or the mayor could do it upon his own, at his own discretion as well. Uh, but let's not fool anybody here. Uh, we have a mayor and we have a city council who do not want constructive criticism. Any constructive criticism is seen as vile and antisocial and anti-statist and against your agenda and your narrative to control everything that we do and say in our community through the eyes and the, the strength of the government. So uh, that is really what we have here. Uh, the reason that these meetings aren't well attended is because it is the council that is vile and uncivil. And they don't have trust in the city government under your leadership. You have been an embarrassment and placing this on the agenda tonight is foolhardy. Thank you. Ms. Alderman. I mean, the whole reason I'm here is because you were so uncivil, so cruel, and so this, I, I've told you guys, I don't think you have souls. You don't ever show any emotion, anything, any kindness, anything. You allow people, George was slandered, you, I was slandered by a, a city leader. Yes, it wasn't a city employee, but under the, sorry, I'm angry. I don't speak well when I'm angry. You all let it go all the way to the election, knowing about the slander and all that. How can you do that and then talk about peaceful, wonderful things is beyond me. You don't live in reality of what is happening out there, of what, how badly we are being bullied as citizens. I didn't want to come because I knew you were going to attack me. Mr. Landman always attacks everything. Anything I say, anything George says, you go and you attack it. That's what citizens, why citizens don't come. You attacked even poor little Lillian last week. You guys are the problem. And you need to think about things like moments of silence because you need to think about something with your emotions because you obviously, I don't know, you just. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address this? Seeing none, I will close the public comment. Bring it back to the council. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Well, trust in city government is always a difficult thing to assess, and you never know. But the clearest barometer we have is, of course, every election season. We just have gone through that, and we've seen the results we've seen. So, Oh, God. So, Out of uh, order. Excuse me. I'm trying to talk. So, I have told I'd Mr. I'd like to Dane. continue with my comments, no, please. No, you may not. There are 40 percent. Oh. I have three <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Landman. All right. Moment. I'd be pleased to cede my time to my neighbor. All right. Only 40% of the vote is counted. And you guys, <clears throat> Mr. Damien, was rude. You all know the story. Oh Can I continue now? Mr. Lamman, please continue. Thank you. You guys so are really what, out of order tonight. Oh, my gosh. What I wanted to say uh, regarding this thing, at least, is, first of all, I think this was a perfectly good thing to bring for discussion. And I think this is a perfect example why there is some value, regardless of where you're sitting, to have that moment of silence before you talk about issues that could be emotionally charged. 
about important complex issues and, and basically just trying to work together as people, because that's always a difficult thing to do. There's no question about that. But I will say I do tend to agree with my colleague that uh, I believe the current uh, statute we have on the book that allows the mayor full flexibility to deal with this, the council as well, is satisfactory for me. Uh, it strikes me as that having, and I think Mr. Coleman's word covered it, a mandatory gesture does to me have a connotation. It may not be the intent, and I truly understand that. I can see how it could be a co connotation completely away from any religious overtones, yet there's no doubt that's there. For my mind, if we have a mandatory moment of silence after the Pledge of Allegiance, that strikes me as a move in that direction. And, and I would find that problematic, I think. I think we look in the national level, we see a move perhaps in directions more supportive of something like that. But I don't think I see that in that state, and I don't think I see that for this community. I'm not sure if that's something that would be appropriate. So I think from my perspective, although having that moment of silence to gather my thoughts might be really something I'd like sometimes, I'd rather forego it than open the door to that. I think people before us have done the work of grappling with this serious issue. They've come to something that the community supports and fits the community, and I'm open to argument tonight, and I have some flexibility, but right now that's the direction I'd like to go. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I had done a little bit of research to see what other cities around the state are doing and um, if they had a mandatory moment of silence or if it was something that was more um, discretionary. And I, I do like the idea. I mean, I didn't hear any opposition or support for it with the comments, so I'm just going to go with what I was thinking ahead of time, which was I think I like leaving it at the mayor's discretion right now just because we have that flexibility, but it's not anything that's um, being imposed. So those are my thoughts. Thank you. Ms. Mahoney? Um, I couldn't go either way. I do agree um, with what both of you have said. Um, I do like um, the possibility that the mayor or um, a council member can ask for it. My question around that is that what it doesn't state in the policy is uh, where that placement would be. You mentioned in the staff report that if we were to put it back in, it would come in after the Pledge of Allegiance. It is silent in the city council policy, so I'm not sure exactly where a mayor would um, insert this, and maybe that is something that that we may have to look at to to update um, this policy. So, so if either a council member or mayor wants to have a moment of silence for something, that there's already a, a spot that that can um, be brought into on the agenda. So. Um. The existing policy allows for the, the mayor and or a council member to request a moment of silence under a particular situation. I think in our day-to-day -day dealings, and um, sometimes we have a very full agenda, and sometimes we might have a light agenda, that um, we don't always um, take the time to, to maybe reflect on something that we may want to um, in reference to either um, a memoriam or, or some tragic situation like that, or, or even gathering our thoughts if we're, you know, we're coming out of a closed session meeting um, and we want to just kind of compose for a moment before we move on. Um, that's why I thought it would be good to have that opportunity before a meeting, um, because we get so busy. And, and, you know, then sometimes at the end of a meeting it's like, oh, that's right, I wanted to recognize this for somebody or I wanted to do something like that. So I thought if we had the, the um, item there, then um, it, it would be uh, allow us to, just to have that there. And of course, um, you, know, you know, we're all so busy and all have so many things going. It, it's easy to, to forget about those little things. Mr. Mayor, if I might, good points. And I wonder if we may not already have that flexibility built into uh, policy 2014-01. It does say uh, the mayor at his or her discretion may call for a moment of silence as they believe appropriate. 
and also mentions that individual council members may request that the mayor observe a moment of silence, but it doesn't designate a time. And I would argue, especially working on JPAs and stuff now, I know sometimes it's good to be very specific as to what you want, and other times it's good not to, to ensure flexibility. Because I could see there are some times, for example, let's say we have a very stressful um, closed session before this. We were coming in there last minute, there were some technical problems. We see these things happen all the time. You might want to say, I'd like to take a moment of silence just for us all to collect, get our notes together, be ready. On the other hand, there are other things when we see tragedies happen in the community, sometimes it's good to dedicate at the end of a meeting. And I think giving you or whoever our mayor is in that particular, that flexibility, as well as us having the ability to make a suggestion, and perhaps even suggest along with it that we feel maybe it should be at the beginning or whenever it's appropriate. I think we have the options to do what we need to do there with that, maybe. And, and that, that, without that going into a man, question. yeah. And was, so we could have that and it's still not cross into something that might be perceived as a mandatory moment of silence. That kind of was my question, and, and maybe it is really for the city attorney to to answer. Do we have to have something specific, and does it have to be anywhere specific on the agenda or spot or anything, or do we have that flexibility? I would say if you had a regular standing item at every meeting, you would need to put into your council protocols, which has an order of agenda, mm -hmm. a regular placement for that. Because it would also have implications for public comment, uh, you know, where that occurs, and if anyone wishes to comment on the moment of silence. Um, any regular agenda item you do need to have in your order. If you do it on an occasional basis, there's been an event in the city or something that happens and you start the meeting in recognition or you close the meeting in recognition, then that does not need to be obviously on the agenda because it's not a regular item and it's a, a brief moment. And again, as long as at some point public comment is allowed, you're fine. That helps. No, that, that helps because I wasn't, that was exactly what I wanted to have clear is, you know, where and when and if it was flexible enough with this being written. But if it's occasional and it doesn't have to be, you know, hard and fast, then maybe that's the way we go. Here. Okay. Just one more comment, too. Um, quite honestly, you know, uh, the mayor, in opening up a public meeting, you know, if you, if you felt you needed the time, and the time we're talking about is, is seconds. We're not talking about minutes. We're talking about seconds, typically, these moments of silence in the way I've seen them. It's also just as simple as the mayor to sit there and look down on your agenda and take 10 seconds and then call the meeting to order. You know, there, there's, there's a number of ways of doing this, and I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but I think I really feel, like I said earlier, that our standing policy is the one that makes perfect sense at this point in time because the discretion is there. And I totally agree with what the city attorney said that um, we don't need to make this a regular agendized item. I mean, if it, that way it's, you know, it could be done at the appropriate time at the beginning or at the end of the meeting. So that's where I would go with it. Well, let me ask you this. Would this be something that would detract or contribute to our meetings? You know, um, it could do both. It just depends on how people uh, interpret it. So and, and I, how would you think it might detract? Well, there, there's people out there that may feel, that's why I said this earlier, that it may have a religious undertone. I don't feel that it does. Not right. um, but Not there's right. people that have expressed that concern over the years. I've heard that. Um, I don't agree with it, but that doesn't matter. If one person feels that way, there could be multiple people that feel that way. So, you know, why why push it if we don't have to, I guess, is where I'm going with it. Because the discretion is there. You can still do this if you feel... Uh, because I think a, a reflective moment before you delve into a meeting would be um, contributory toward that meeting. Well, it, and again, the mayor has the power to start the public meeting. Right. And by sitting there and looking down at your notes, collecting your thoughts for however many seconds that may take, and then you call the meeting to order, you've accomplished the same thing for yourself. 
as well, the city Well, let me city. ask you this, then. There's more questions. Wow. <laughs> That's good. Well, why do we do the Pledge of Allegiance? That's mandatory. Why do we do the Pledge of Allegiance? I think we can officially rename this council meeting opening the can of worms tonight. <laughs> well, no, I mean, if, you, if, if the concern is that it's a mandatory action to have a moment of silence, we have a mandatory action to have a Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Mayor, if I might, then, that's a good question. The reason for me, mandatory, there's a lot of things we do are mandatory, and there's good reason for it. This has problems because, for many, it does have strong religious overtones. Many will perceive it that way. There's a lot of people who have different creeds, beliefs. Some don't even have any beliefs. They would prefer not to be part of that, and I tend to understand and personally support a strong separation between church and state. And that's why, in this particular sense, it could be problematic for potentially many of our constituents to have that. It's, it's unfortunate because I think the concept you're thinking of is a valuable one, and the problem isn't that the concept isn't good. It's that it's coming... It's something that has a different history. It comes with a different frame to it, baggage, if you will, that makes it problematic. And I think that's because otherwise you'd have my support, but I just can't get there for this. It's the calling it moment of silence. Yeah, there's, it's it's, that's, that's there's some clarity, I think, in everybody's minds in the public of what that means, uh, whether right or wrong, well, what they see. And if I, if I may, too, Mr. Mayor, sorry to interject, but it's just on point. Um, a lot of the cities that I looked up online as far as having a moment of silence, they were doing it to replace a moment of prayer. So there is actually some history connection of that they were replacing it with a moment of silence so that you could pray or just be quiet um, and contemplate. So, um, and I also, I just tend to think that anything more that we put on the agenda that's um, open for comment, you know, that's a permanent item, then it just opens it up for uh, uh, consistent criticism. If people are objecting to it, then they're going to object every meeting. Well, I suppose it could be an action item. Yeah. And one last suggestion that might be helpful. I, I'm supportive of my colleague, Councilmember DeLassos, but the one move to the middle I might like to make, you suggested 10, 15 seconds to gather your thoughts. I wonder for those of us who are a little older and less capable if we could make that, you know, 90, 120 uh, seconds, that might be valuable. But I think with having that ability, and the broad latitude that a mayor does have. When you feel the need, you'd have our support. But as far as making it a regular thing, I, I think that's probably the one place I wouldn't want to go, at least at this point. Okay. Since we don't really have any direction on that, I think 2017, 2018 is going to be very interesting, and we're going to need all the moments of silence we can get with our upcoming administration. So with that, we don't have any direction on that, so we'll move on. Just keep that in mind next time. Okay, we have no correspondence in pending legislation, and now we have the city manager's report. All right, thank you, Mayor, members of the council. So, um, so general update that uh, PG&E has been um, has been working as part of a CPUC program to replace throughout service territory 150,000 high pressure sodium lights, those are the old yellow lights, with um, LED lights. And, um, and that includes Katati, which is obviously part of its service territory. And um, I bring it up tonight because PG&E is planning in the near future to begin replacing all the remaining PG&E owned street light fixtures um, with the new LED fixtures. And, and these are the, um, the Cobra head street lights as opposed to the decorative, they're not touching the decorative lights. Um, and it's approximately, uh, I believe the count is about 377 lights. And so wherever you see those Cobra headlights that are still yellow, those are the ones that are gonna be targeted for replacement. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all, all the uh, city owned fixtures were replaced with the previous plot, the block grant that we got from DOE. Mm -hmm. So um, that is coming up. And also just some construction updates. Downtown specific plan project. We have final striping, which um, will resume on Old Redwood Highway very soon, as soon as the weather allows, as well as um, completing the uh, in-ground, well, turning on the in-ground lighted crosswalks, entry monument signs at the plazas, um, bus stops, street furniture, um, benches when the mosaic is done. So all that stuff is still pending, but hopefully very soon here it'll be done. 
then the South Preservation, which is the par part of that project that goes through downtown, old downtown. Um, again, just some final striping there. And the striping I'm talking about in particular is, is around the crosswalks, you know, thick yellow or thick white striping on the edges of the crosswalks, the new stamp crosswalks, as well as um, some uh, markings and parking stalls. There's some small parking stalls that may appear to be a parking stall, but it's really a, not a parking stall. So just clarifying some, you know, striping out those areas and doing some other minor striping, turning on the crosswalk at Page Street. And then West Katati Avenue Water Main, that project also included the master meter at Rancho Katati Shopping Center. It's the switchover, the service switchover occurred last week. So um, the shopping center is now served by that new meter and they're doing the final, like the back, you know, the trench patching and final work there. So that's almost done. Um, I mentioned last meeting that um, with the prop, with the uh, passage of Proposition 64 staff, we've been working on um, a potential emergency action for council to um, just hold, reg hold the current regulations until we have a chance um, as a community to have a more, more full discussion about um, marijuana, recreational marijuana, marijuana in general, cannabis. Yes. Um, and a lot of exciting recreation news. We had uh, Camp Katati Thanksgiving break camp going on. We had uh, um, 11 campers this week, so it was, um, it was it was a full room. And um, we're going to finish uh, the week out with a trip to the police station, a tour of our squad car, and Q&A with our officers. And they have all sorts of cool stuff. You know, the, the, uh, they have all the stickers and the plant, you know, the, um, the cards, like the baseball cards. So those are all always a hit with the kids. <clears throat> and then the second, um, during the second week break in December, we're offering another camp for families who, um, who work, don't have that week off, but their kids are out of school. Um, also, Star Kids Littles will be performing Aladdin next Friday and Saturday in the Katati Room. This is one of our, um, our rec programs, theater and singing rec program. Friday, December 2nd, we have um, the annual holiday tree lighting in La Plaza Park, and we'll have performances by the Butter Dishes, which um, performed last year, and Star Kids for um, the Christmas songs, and maybe some dry runs of the performances. Also, um, vendors and handmade candles and um, uh, the tri-tip trolley. Um, there's also going to be there's also going to be uh, horse and carriage rides at that event. So uh, that'll that's always fun. And then the next day on Saturday, December third, the Chamber of Commerce is hosting their downtown shop and stroll event, which we'd all talked about a couple meetings ago, with businesses and vendors. Um, filling up Old Road Highway with, and the plan is with live music and plenty of opportunity for the community to, sam to sample different eat drinks and services throughout the day. And then both, um, actually this event will also include a horse and carriage ride sort of around downtown. There's a little loop that they're going to run through downtown. And um, for the uh, tree lighting event, there'll be suggested donations um, for the carriage ride to fund the rec recreation scholarship fund. But it's, uh, you know, it's a uh, suggested donation, not required for you to ride the horse and carriage ride. We also want to make sure that there's, um, that everyone gets a chance to ride because <laughs> they can fill up quick. The lines can. And then um, December 10th, we have our first breakfast with Santa in the Katati room where families will have a chance to eat breakfast, make some crafts in Santa's workshop, and take photos with Santa. And um, for more info on all of our upcoming programs and events, please visit the city website, katadicity.org, or you can email our recreation coordinator at awilson at So with that, I'd be answer, happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Um, Damien, could you tell me a little bit about um, what the bus stops will look like when they're installed? On Old Railroad Highway? Mm -hmm. There are... Um, I just don't remember. <laughs> yeah, so Sonoma County Transit has a, um, uh, a standard like bus, bus stop shelter. It's not the older looking ones, it's a new one. And I'm, you know, there's, um, there's examples on uh, Windsor, well there's examples on Windsor, Sebastopol. Um, there's one on Rona Park Expressway. Rona Park Expressway? Yeah, sort of near the Raleigh Shopping Center. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're, um, they have a curved roof, and okay. they're enclosed and lighted. Okay. And I believe um, the 
I believe at least initially they're going to be um, blue and silver. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, if you, if we're doing a tree lighting on the second, and then um, breakfast with Santa on the tenth, is Santa going to be at the tree lighting? Santa's going to be busy. Yeah. He's going to be at both. Yes. Okay. And then, <laughs> and then regarding the uh, <clears throat> water main connection at the Rancho Adobe Shopping Center there. Um, the obviously you've seen where they've torn up the street there. Will they'll just be patching it until at some future date, like next year in our budget, we look at LaSalle Avenue for paving. So yeah, they're so they're they're doing the um, trench patch, which is the trench plus some area outside the trench, but not the full street. The street itself will get paved when the next you know. Um, when that street's program for repaving. Okay. Yeah, I just thought it was an interesting timing for the poor merchants in Rancho Adobe um, right before Thanksgiving to have that going on. But yeah, we haven't um, we haven't heard any complaints that I'm aware of yeah. from any of the merchants. The uh, the tie-in itself happened like at 2 a.m., so there was no water disruption for anyone. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any uh, city council member reports? Yes, thank you. A couple of quick notes, maybe just one quick note. Um, the California Homemakers Association, the last several years I've worked with them to coordinate a food drive over here in the old uh, classrooms. So we are scheduling another food drive. It's Wednesday, hold on, December 21, that's a Wednesday. Wednesday, December 21, probably roughly from 9 to 3. Um, you know, we'd love any kind of help. The last couple of, well, three years, we've put together over 150 uh, boxes for needy people. This is countywide. Um, and so they, they come with a cadre of volunteers, and they had people driving as far as Healdsburg and Cloverdale uh, and to the South Petaluma as well. So, um, as many volunteers are willing to come and work any portion of that day. I know that um, several businesses in town have been great over the years in donating, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables. So it's, um, it turned out, I didn't know the first year I did this, but it turned out to be, it's a very nutritious uh, box of food that goes to families. So there's perishables, there's non-perishables, there's like a, I thank God that the fire department was there one year because all those young guys helped unload about you know 150 frozen turkeys because I didn't want to do it all by myself. So it was really good timing that they were there. So uh, just to put that on a note, and I will send an email to our deputy city clerk that maybe we can get that in the announcements for our December meeting because it'll be the week before. But Wednesday, 1221, right next door, um, roughly the hours will be 9 to 3. That's all I have. That's... December 21st? December 21. Oh, I think that's my moment of silence day. Really? Yeah. Well, you can come and be quiet and help put food in boxes. Thank you. Thank you. That's <laughs> my heart. Um, I attended the mayor's and council members meeting last week. That was very, very well attended um, up in Windsor. And then I also attended the waste management agency meeting and uh, a couple of things of note. One, um, I'm sure that uh, city manager's been working with our hauler um, about redirecting our yard waste as that um, yard waste will no longer be able to be brought to the central landfill starting um, November 28th. So that will need to get redirected until such time um, that we have another solution um, for composting. And on that note, um, the good news is, as an RFP was put out for um, possible composting solutions, and they actually have received 16 responses. So there was quite a lot of interest, so that's actually really good news. I don't know who they're from or anything, but um, they did announce that there were 16 received. That was just composting? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So. Um, 
they will be going through them and scoring them and you know bringing forward the best po possible options um, for what will be available um, to us as a county. So that's all I have. Thank you. Council Member Lennon. Uh, no comment tonight, Mr. Mayor. No report other than cross my fingers for good luck. That is good news. That's a sizable turnout. So hopefully maybe we'll have some better solutions. Cross our fingers. Thank you. And I would concur that the, the mayor's and council members meeting was very good. And it's going to look like a pretty interesting year coming up next year. Okay. With that, we'll move on to public comment on non-action agenda items. Ms. Alderman. Which non-action item did you want to Um, out? you cannot ask me that. Oh, okay. You cannot dictate my speech, thank you, sir. Um, I <laughs> would like to um, first talk about the city councilman's report, I mean the city manager's report. That was a dig in to the thing about the, the bus stops for 18 months you did not have in the general plan in the downtown plan, bus stops. I told you and told you and told you. And so this is you guys trying to look really good that now there's bus stops. There was no bus stop. You took out a whole bus stop and didn't do anything. I mean, this is just what kind of games you guys play. The other thing, um, I don't know why you didn't, if you pulled the Valparaiso out of the consent calendar, why you didn't take out Katati Cottages and the SIA? Because that is a big issue. That is not something that should have been on the consent calendar. It's in the critical habitat. It's, I'm, it was very written, very, um, I've changed my mind. I want residential to go in. But it was written not explaining the whole thing that they were carving out of the, that one area the SIA, which I support, but you, you can't just bunch everything out on the consent calendar and then talk about moments of silence. I mean, that's a big issue. Where? Um, I'm sorry I've been like this tonight, but you guys have drove me to it. How long has this been going on? How you've treated everything we say like this? You've not listened to me on anything. Call the registrar of voters on my thing. 40% of the vote has been counted. That's all. Absentee ballots were not counted. You guys need to listen. You're missing everything. You complain about no citizen comment, but then when we comment, you ignore us. It's ridiculous. It's your show. Why didn't you guys all just sit around and talk to each other because we didn't matter? Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Mr. Birch. Earlier tonight, I wanted to speak on uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. Why it was so important to speak, at, speak to that item at the time is because I wanted to speak to some of the people who were here during the Pledge of Allegiance so they could hear what I have to say and that they were subjected to it and participated in it and so forth. The state legislature in their infinite wisdom passed the Brown Act, which clearly states in the government code that these items should be opened up to the public before or during the, their consideration and not at the end of the meeting. And that's exactly what the point I was trying to make tonight is I wanted to say it to the people who are no longer here. But again, Mayor, for many, many months again tonight, you denied me that right. And you are in violation of the Brown Act. Thank you. I do not think that the Pledge of Allegiance is an action item. I can comment whenever I want if I'm running a meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So I don't think that the Pledge of Allegiance is an action item that we are considering, discussing, or voting on. Thank you very much. And secondly, this is not a conspiracy against you and George. We're not getting together and creating these conspiracies. Okay. So um, with that, we don't have any information received that the agenda was posted. And I will adjourn the meeting at 830. Just in time. Thank you.
you, you, um, that meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Well, I'm going to talk. You can go or whatever.